Welcome back to Measure Ag Track, where we're teaching you how to use Google's Environmental Insights Explorer. I'm Marissa Leung, and I'm a software engineer on EIE. In the first video, we introduced the Environmental Insights Explorer. In this video, we'll give you a thorough demonstration of how EIE works. In other words, how to access, work with, download, and share city data. To get started, you'll want to navigate to the EIE website at insights.sustainability.google. For this demo, we'll be showing you how to use the public EIE website. For individuals working on city climate action plans, you can sign up for a free account to access our cities that may not yet be released on this public website. Scroll down to the section titled, Put Google to Work, and click Sign Up. Then follow the prompts provided or just click the Sign Up for Access link in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. To get started, type the name of your city into the search box to see if it's available. If you'd like to see all the cities currently available, click the search box and scroll down to View All Cities. Then click on each region to see more detailed information. Once you've selected a city that you'd like to view the data for, you can click through to be brought to your city summary. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll be using the city of Belo Horizonte, Brazil, and we'll be referring to the site as seen on a desktop browser in full screen. Some elements may appear in slightly different order or orientation when viewed in a smaller window or on a mobile device. This is what the main page will look like for every city. Here, you'll see the area and population of the city. Then you'll see a satellite map showing the geospatial boundary of the city and the area we are assessing. Additionally, you'll see three data boxes showing the top line numbers for our three major data types on EIE. On the left side of the page, you'll see summary data estimates on city emissions across buildings and transportation. On the right side of the page, you'll then see where we are summarizing insights around solutions or interventions, like rooftop solar, that cities might consider to help reduce emissions over time. Note that our data coverage can be limited in some geographies, due to privacy limitations, or because we do not have sufficient sampling in the region, so you may not see data for every single data type. Clicking the link on each of these boxes will lead you to a new page with more detailed information about that data. For example, if we click Explore and Customize under Transportation Emissions, it leads us to a page that looks like this. On the right, you see a visualization of transportation data on the city map. On the left, you see more detailed information, including activity data, that factors into the calculations, and options for adjusting the data parameters for your needs. This data is grouped according to inventory reporting guidelines for transportation. To go back to our main page, we simply click on the city's name in the top menu, or click the back button in your browser. When we click Explore and Customize Data, under Building Emissions Data, we'll see a different view of the map on the right side of the page, with more detailed and customizable data options on the left. Similar to Transport, this data is grouped according to inventory reporting guidelines for building emissions. Using the drop-down menu at the top of the page, we can select rooftop solar potential to see that data in detail. Above the map, on the right side of the page, are four important buttons. Here is where you can see the release notes. View raw data, bookmark this page, or easily share the page. You'll see these four options on the transportation and building detail data pages as well. Above those buttons, you'll see a little gear symbol. Clicking here will allow you to toggle on Imperial units. Now, let's go back to the transportation emissions data and dive a little deeper. First, note the year drop-down on the top right. This shows which year's data we are seeing. If past years are available, you can switch to those snapshots with this drop-down. Now, let's look at our map on the right. As you can see, the default view shows the entire city at a glance. You can zoom in and out by using the plus and minus buttons in the corner, and you can drag to move your view. The default view shows the total estimated number of trips taken within the city boundaries for the year 2019. By clicking on these other symbols, you can see total inbound trips only or total outbound trips only. Let's have a look at the left side of the page now. 
whereas the map shows you the estimated number of trips. Here, we are seeing the estimated tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year. And again, we see a little more information about the data. As you scroll down, you'll see a few graphs. Percent of total transportation emissions and percent of total vehicle kilometers traveled, which help break down how much of an impact different types of trips are having. Underneath is a bar graph that breaks the data out by mode of transportation. As you hover over the bars on the graph, you'll see the numbers clearly. For example, in Belo Horizonte, it was calculated that automobiles made up 71% of the total kilometers traveled for the year 2019, followed by motorcycles, which made up 14%. So, what if you have more detailed or accurate information about your city's transportation emissions and want to tweak the calculations that resulted in these numbers? Start by clicking here, where it says Adjust Values. This opens a calculator where you can create what we call a user estimate. You can enter your own data or adjust our data based on your needs. For example, let's say Belo Horizonte just got new automobile emissions factor data that was published by their parent country, Brazil. Belo Horizonte can input these new values in the calculator. As you can see, Google creates new calculations based on the data you enter. This can be useful for planning purposes when considering the potential impacts of various initiatives. By running different hypothetical scenarios, you can compare and contrast options for curbing emissions. Then click Reset All to go back to Google's estimated numbers. Let's keep scrolling. In the About This Data section, you can read more about how the transportation emissions data you see here was derived. Click on Get More In-Depth Information and Methodology to access our Methodology Hub, where you can learn about the data, privacy, and frequently asked questions. If you're interested in learning more about all of EIE's data, you can watch the next unit in this video series. The other important link in our data section is this one, where it says Download or Export the Data. This is where you can see the raw data and download it in CSV format for use in other calculations or programs. Let's go back to our transportation emissions page. At the bottom is our section with a couple of ideas for reducing transportation emissions. One option is to expand electric vehicle charging infrastructure to encourage residents to transition away from internal combustion engine vehicles. This can be done for public transportation agencies as well, like bus and rail. Another effective method is to transform your city's high-density regions into pedestrian-only zones. Similar measures, like limiting vehicles on certain days of the week or implementing congestion pricing, have also been shown to reduce emissions and improve quality of life. The City of Dublin, Ireland used EIE to gain better data about bicycle usage in and around the city. They've implemented a range of strategies to reduce transportation emissions creating more bike lanes and starting bike sharing programs. As these new changes take hold in the city, they plan to continue to use EIE to capture year-over-year -year snapshots of their data to measure their program's effectiveness. Of course, there are many other methods and innovations that may be effective for reducing transportation emissions in your city. Rocky Mountain Institute's Carbon-Free City Handbook is an excellent resource for additional ideas. You can access it by simply clicking the link on this page. As you can see, looking at transportation emissions will give you a sense of what may be affecting your carbon emissions. Perhaps non-residents are commuting to your city, or many people are traveling by car instead of public transit. Equipped with this knowledge, you may identify better strategies for reducing those emissions. Nice job getting through transportation emissions with me. There's a lot to digest there. Next, we'll look at building emissions. Let's use our drop-down menu to visit the Building Emissions page for Belo Horizonte. Again, our default view shows the entire city at a glance. Yellow indicates residential buildings, while orange indicates non-residential buildings. On the left side, you see the total estimated tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year. This is the same number that was displayed on our city summary. But here, you can read more about our sources the time period the data is from, and key assumptions. 
As we continue to scroll down on the left side of the page, you can see the building emissions data broken down into more detail. Here, you can see that in Belo Horizonte, 58% of total emissions from buildings in the city are from residential buildings, and 42% are from non-residential buildings. You can see how this breaks down in terms of tons of carbon dioxide equivalent below. For Belo Horizonte, Google estimates that residential buildings emit 435,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year, whereas non-residential buildings emit 311,000 tons. Throughout EIE, you'll see these small information icons. Clicking on those will provide additional info for whatever section you're looking at. As we saw in transportation emissions, you can open the data calculator by clicking on Adjust Values. You can change the data to more closely match a different source for your city, or run projections to see how certain changes or policies might impact emissions. After you've made changes, simply click Reset All if you'd like to return to the Google data. Just like on our transportation emissions page, as you scroll down, you'll see more information about the data, links to our methodology page, and for downloading the data, as well as a few recommended actions you can take to reduce emissions. As we've noted here, one action that cities can consider is to increase implementation of rooftop solar energy. To learn more about how rooftop solar might be able to help your city combat climate change, let's visit our in-depth data page on that topic. The map here gives you a quick snapshot view of your city's overall rooftop solar potential. The more yellow is in your city, the more sunshine your rooftops tend to see overall. The darker the colors get, the more shaded the rooftops. As you can see, Belo Horizonte has a lot of yellow area, which means the city has great potential for rooftop solar panels to become a more meaningful part of its energy mix. You can zoom in to get more granular information about different neighborhoods, blocks, or even certain buildings. On the left, we have our numerical data, just like on our other data pages. However, where building emissions and transportation emissions data show carbon emissions that are being added to your atmosphere, this is showing how much potential exists in your city to prevent emissions through the installation of rooftop solar panels. Scrolling down, we've provided some equivalences that help make this data more concrete. If all of the viable rooftops in Belo Horizonte had solar panels installed, the adjustment to the city's energy mix would prevent carbon emissions equivalent to removing 102,000 passenger cars off the road for an entire year, or over 12 million tree seedlings grown for an entire decade. These equivalences are often useful in communicating the impact of emission cutting initiatives to the public. Before we go, let's take a quick peek at our lab section, which is where we test our latest initiatives and datasets. You'll find the link in the website header at the top of the page. EIE is a constantly evolving tool, so here's where you can stay up to date and see what's coming next. Now we've covered all the types of data available through EIE. If you have any more questions, visit our Frequently Asked Questions page on the website. You can find it by visiting the Methodology Hub and clicking on Frequently Asked Questions in the menu on the right. Our next video will be all about the data where we got it, how we calculated it, and what you can do with it. Thanks for joining me.